Hi. Well, in the last few lessons, we've been learning notes in the bass clef. And for lesson nine, we're going to make a return to the treble clef. Here it is, remember? That rather sort of strange curly-whirly sign. That's the treble clef sitting there on the stave, the five lines of music. And then just to revise what we learned a few lessons ago in the treble clef, I'm sure you'll very quickly remember that this note here is middle C. Remember, we've learned that in the treble clef, middle C is on this extra little line beneath the stave. Unlike the bass clef, where middle C is on this extra little line, but it's above the stave, in the bass clef, that is. So here's middle C in the treble clef. We've also learned that this note, which is in the space just above middle C, just a step up from C, is D. Because remember, we're going up step by step, which means that we're going forwards through the alphabet as the music gets higher, as the notes get further to the right on the keyboard. So we've got C, we've got D. We've also learned the next step, which is E. And you'll remember that the note E is on the first proper line of the stave, the extra line here for C, the space that's between the extra line and the bottom line of the stave, that's D. But this note, E, is the note that's on the bottom line of the stave. So in today's lesson, we're going to go one step further. Now you can already see what the pattern is. If it's C, D, E, well, the next note up is really bound to be the next letter in the alphabet, which is F. You'll also perhaps notice there's a little pattern that's starting to show itself. C is on a line. The next note, D, is in a space. E, the next note, is on a line. So F must be in a space. Line space, line, space. So if E is on this bottom line here, then F must be in this space here, just above that bottom line. And now we're in the first proper space inside the treble clef stave, aren't we? Because this F is taking up the space between lines one and two. So we've got C, D, E, and now the new note, F. So let's now have a look at that in terms of the keyboard. So you know that C is here, middle C, the C nearest to the middle of the piano. And then we've got D, which is just one to the right. That's this note here. And then we've got E, which is one to the right of D. That's this note here. And then we've got F, the new note, which is one more step to the right, which is this note here, and this is what it looks like on the stave. So this is the new note F. Now, one other thing you might notice about this new note F is that F is on the left-hand side of three black notes. Remember, we learned that C is on the left-hand side of two black notes. Now we're learning that F is on the left-hand side of three black notes. And we spent some time back in lesson one trying to find C's on the keyboard, didn't we? We said, well, this one's C because it's on the left of those two black notes. This is the next C on the left of those two black notes. Here's middle C on the left of these two black notes. Here's the next C left of those two black notes. There's the next C left of those two black notes and so on. Well, now you could probably find all the Fs. You might want to have a look across your piano and see if you can find some Fs. This note must be F because it's on the left-hand side of those three black notes. This is the next F, left-hand side of those three. Next F, left-hand side of these three. The next F, left-hand side of these three. So you can find lots of Cs, C, 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 and now you can find Fs. F, 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 F. 
So it's quite a useful thing to be aware of, really, to help you find C's and F's. So, here's C, here's D, here's E, and here's F. Now you know that we learned to play C with the thumb, we learned to play D with finger number two, we learned to play E with finger number three, so now we're going to learn to play F, and that must be finger number four. Now when it comes to fingers four and five, some people find it's a little bit harder to get fingers four and five to behave themselves on the piano or on the keyboard. They find that fingers one, two and three are a little bit stronger than fingers four and five, and they find that it's sort of a little bit easier to use fingers one, two, three, where fingers four and five can just be a little bit awkward. So don't worry if you have a little bit of trouble at first getting finger number four to work for you on F. And you might just want to begin by finding this note F and just practice playing finger number four on F. So we just get used to finding finger number four on F. Now as you do that, try not to have all these other fingers sticking up in the air or all over the place. Try to keep that good hand position, but get used to playing F with finger number four. And then when you're happy about that, let's go back to C. Play C with the thumb. Have a go at doing that. And then move on to D with number two. Then move on to E with number three. And move on to F with number four. And when that feels comfortable, go the other way. Start with F on number four. Then E on number three. D on number two. And C on number one. And then you might decide that you would like to make up your own tune. You could become a composer before you know it. See if you can make up a tune using those notes C, D, E and F and get used to putting the right fingers on the right notes. So you could go from C to F. And you could do that a couple of times, couldn't you? And then you could go to D and back to F and E and back to F. Then you could go to D, to C, to F. You get the idea. You can arrange those notes in any order you like and you can do any kind of rhythm that you think sounds nice and just make up your own tune using those notes C, D, E and F. And apart from the fact it's quite fun being a composer and writing your own tunes and improvising and making up your own tunes, it's also getting these fingers, one, two, three and four, used to playing those notes on the keyboard. So spend a bit of time having fun with making up your own tunes. And then when you're ready to move on, we'll have a look at today's tune on the board. So what have we got? We've got a stave with five lines on it. We've got a treble clef that's just reminding us that we're dealing with life in the right hand. We've got a number three telling us to count three beats in every bar. And then we've got lots of notes that are made up of C, D, E and F. And also notes that are telling us about the rhythm. We've got some crotchets, these coloured in notes that are worth one beat. We've got some minims, these notes that are not coloured in, but they've got stems on them. And remember, the minims are worth two beats. And we've also got two dotted minims. There's one dotted minim here and another dotted minim at the end. Remember what they are? They're the minims with the dots after them. That's why they're called dotted minims. And remember, we said that the dotted minim has got three beats on it. Why has it got three beats on it? Because we know a minim's worth two, and we said that if you put a dot after it, the dot adds on half of what the note's worth. So if the note's worth two, then the dot must be worth half of two, which is one. So two add one equals three. So a dotted minim's got three beats. And we also know we've got three beats in each bar, so if this note is taking up the whole bar, it must have three beats. So that's dealing with all the things that the music is telling us. It's amazing how much it does tell us. 
And the other thing, of course, is that we've got these two phrase marks telling us that this piece of music is in two musical sentences. And we'll just come back and think about that a little later on. For now, let's see if we can read through the notes in this piece. So without playing anything, just read the notes with me. Here's C, the one with the line through. We're going up one to D, up one to E, up one to our new note F, look. That's notes in the bottom space of the actual stave. Then we're coming back down one to E. We're coming down again just by step to D. And we're stepping down again to C. Now you'll notice at the end of this first phrase, we've got a bit of a jump now to the first note of the second phrase. So we can't just think, oh, it's going up, so this must be D. It's obviously not D, is it? Because D looks like this. But it's actually going up quite a lot of notes, all the way up to F. So there's a C, and here's an F. So we'll have to watch out for that leap when it comes in the music. So if this is F, then we go down one to E, we go back up one again to F, then we're going to play F again, and then there's a little bit of a leap, isn't there? Because if it was just going down one note by step, well, we'd be going from a space to a line. But we're not going from a space to a line, we're going from a space to the next space. So we're missing out the note that's on this line. Well, we know the note that's on this line is E. So we're going from F, this note here, to D, this note here. And we're missing out E in between. Space, space, missing out the E line. So F to a D. Then we're going up one to E. And then we're missing out a note because we're jumping from a line to this extra line underneath the stave. Well, we know the extra line underneath the stave is C, don't we? So we're going from E down to C, but we can also notice that we're missing out D. We haven't got D, that space underneath the stave. So a lot of this piece is just going up one or down one. Every now and again, we're going to repeat a note. And sometimes we've got quite a big leap here with another smaller leap there and another smaller leap there. So we're going to have to be really careful when we come to those leaps, aren't we? So I think we'd better play through the notes now and see if we can read all these notes. So don't worry about the rhythm, just worry about finding the notes. So don't forget we're back in the right hand because it's the treble clef. So you organize your right hand on the keys so you've got your thumb on middle C. Here's middle C, here we go. So there's C, up a step to D, up a step to E, up a step to F. Down a step to E, down a step to D, down a step to C. Now this is where we're going to make that big leap up. And remember this note here looks like this one, doesn't it? It's F in that bottom space. So all the way up to F, down one to E, up one to F. Now play F again. Then we're going to skip down to this note D. And we're going to go up just one to E, and we're going to skip down to this note C. So I hope you can see why those notes are the letters that we've just described. And you notice I use that word skip. When you skip down from one space to the next space, just missing out a note in between. So I go from F and I skip down to D. Do you see what happens as you look at the picture of the keyboard? There's F and there's D. And we've just skipped over this note E in the middle. E's on this line, isn't it? So I've gone from F, I've skipped over E, and I've gone to D. And there's another skip at the end because I'm skipping from this line to this extra line. So this one's E. I'm skipping over D that would be in this space. And I'm arriving at C. So you can kind of read that some notes are going by step, just stepping up or stepping down. Some notes are skipping from one space to the next space or one line to the next line. So I hope all those things help you to read the notes. Before we try and play it, 
Let's just think about the rhythm. So I'll count three, you try and clap the rhythm with me. So we've got minims and crotchets, and we've got dotted minims. Remember, one beat for the crotchet, two beats for the minims, three beats for the dotted minims. I'll count in three. One, two, 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 three. Okay, let's see if we can put the whole thing together. So we're now going to play the notes and we're going to try and play it with the right rhythm as well. So I'll count three. Are you all set? Right hand at the keyboard, ready with your thumb on middle C, finger two over D, finger three over E, and finger four over F. I'll count three in. One, two, three. 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 I wonder how you got on. You may have found the first phrase a little bit easier to play than the second phrase. The first phrase is climbing up and then it's climbing down again and it's all going up by step and coming down by step. In the second phrase, we've got to do these two skips and we've got to remember to leap up to the first note of the second phrase and we've got to repeat a note as well. So the second phrase is certainly a bit harder than the first phrase. Let's just try the second phrase on its own. So we're starting on F, which will be finger number four. I'll count three in. One, two, three. 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 Let's just try that again with the letter names. One, two, three. F, E, F, F, D, E, C. Okay. Well, let's see if we can play this as a duet. We'll try the whole piece. Don't play it as a duet if you're not quite happy about it as yet. You might want a bit of time just to practice it on your own and you can rewind and just look over any of that counting, any of the rhythm and any of the pitch that's the letter names of the notes until you're very sure about all of that and then you'll be ready to duet. Here we go, three for nothing. One, two, three. 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 Stop. And then when you've got that perfected, you could play it again and think about the two phrases. Remember what we're trying to do with our phrases? Maybe start a bit quieter, get a bit louder into the middle of the phrase and get quieter again, and then do the same thing in the second phrase. And without disturbing our counting, just let the music breathe at the end of the first phrase just by lifting off the keys and then starting again. Let's have another go and see if we can do those phrases. Three for nothing. One, two, three. 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 Well, I hope you've enjoyed dealing with C, D, E and F in the right hand. Come back for the next lesson when you're happy about all of that and then we'll learn another new note.